visit him every chance I could. Um, but I, w I would say independence in terms of getting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. So that you, you've done that much more at UNF. Absolutely. There, at Middlesex, it was more like what had Robert had said of the general education classes, and that's where I did all of my general ed classes was at Middlesex. That way, when I got to UMass, all I had to do was focus on my music courses. So, but it, it's a lot more independent reliance on um, in UMass. May I repeat the question, please? Sure. So at UMass Lowell right now, what kinds of experiences are you having either in the classroom or outside that you did not have at Middlesex? So. I think one of the biggest experiences would definitely be the interaction between uh, professors and the students. Because, you know, here at Middlesex, you know, I'm transferring, so a lot of professors either know or they don't know, and then the advisors know that you're transferring and stuff. So they're going to put a lot of intention, you know, seeing, seeing to that you work hard and making sure that you get to where you want to go. At UMass, when you get there, you know, if you're planning to stay, the professors, you know, they have all these different methods of, you know, doing the classwork and everything, you know, the grading policies and stuff like that. And so the experience that I had was um, in the classroom that you have to play, you have to play as the puppet almost, like a crucial role in UMass to understand how the professor wants the class done. Because here at Middlesex, you know, I had this one professor for a history course and then a biology course. I can almost correlate the two classes together with grading policies. At UMass, you know, I have the anthropology class and then a psych course, two different grading policies, and, you know, I couldn't correlate them. And yet, they're around the same subfield. And, you know, I have to understand what my professor in this class wants and what my professor wants in that class and stuff like that. Outside, I not so much because I don't attend a lot of the organizations or club. It, granted, it probably would help me a lot more, but I spend, I want to focus a lot more on my coursework and you know my essays and exams and stuff like that. So I don't put a lot of attention outside of my uh, school life mm -hmm. because I feel like you know if I focus on that, work hard, I can play later. You know that old saying. So. But I think the professor's understanding, you know, the syllabus, especially the syllabus, is very crucial. I had this one professor from my cognitive psych course. She had this grazing policy, you know, where you have these, these classroom assignments. You know, if you do them, they're pretty easy. You get, you know, the points that you can get. At the end of the semester, she takes the lowest one off. I got all of them correct. Automatically takes one off. So I intentionally lost points for doing all my classwork. Yeah, I lost points. So instead of getting an A in that class, I got a B plus, literally an 89. <laughs> so I was kind of a little upset by that, So which made my GPA for this semester, for last semester, 3.4 instead of a 3.5. So, you know, paying attention to what specifically the professor says, you know, sending out emails to understand if you're confused about something, you have to know what they want. Because if you don't know, it's like a shot in the dark and you can possibly fail a class without even knowing if you don't pay attention to what the professor wants. So I think there's a difference in the experiences there. Um, it's, it's hard for me to answer this question. I, you know, some of the challenges, like I said, with study skills, um, uh, you know, things like that. Um, but I, I really don't think that middle school should change anything having to do with, um, you know, professor interaction or anything like that. Um, I had great relationships with my professors. Um, and although they may be a little colder and distant at, at you know the four-year institutions because they have so many kids, you know, um, I, I really enjoyed that at Middlesex. I think it's what made my experience, um, you know, what it was. Um, and so it's hard for me to answer that question. I've only you know I've only been there for one semester, um, and uh, you know I. I I'd say organization is, has a lot to do with it, but um, I can't really pinpoint anything that I think that should really change inside the classroom to help me with mm -hmm. things like and that. And have you gotten involved outside of your coursework, or did you not have time? With your no, I, I, um, I, I did service learning in Middlesex. It's uh, something I really liked, and so I started volunteering uh, at an elementary school, and so I still do that, and I work, and I go to Tufts full time, so I have no time to do it. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, of course they don't like. Uh, most of the kids there, they live there. So um, that's a challenge, too. Um, at a school like that, it's not a commuter school. 
you know, they give you a workload expecting that you're going to walk 30 feet to your dorm room and start working on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm commuting two hours a day, basically, mm -hmm. depending on traffic rates and that sort of stuff. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. um, I had a slight different experience with faculty and staff um, interaction. Um, here at MCC, it's, it's very natural. You, you know, you have 30 people in the class, and you, you, you can't help but get to know your professor. Um, at BU, um, it's a big school. You have 200 people in the lecture hall. You're kind of starstruck because your professor might have won a Nobel Prize or a Pulitzer, and you're kind of like, oh my god, he's a celebrity. Um, and so like with the whole office hour thing I said, you kind of have to really push yourself to go. You ha it's a separate class for me. It was an extra hour a week to go to office hours and talk to my people. And then you get there and you're like, oh my god, what am I going to say? I don't have a question, but I, you know, I need help. You know, I'll go for help, but I also want a letter of recommendation. Do I just go and say hi? Or, hey, my name is Haisa. How are you? It's hard. Um, and something else that I was, um, I think something that I, I did not experience here at MCC, but I know other community colleges have a stronger grasp of this a little bit is the idea of internships and that whole volunteer thing I talked about. Um, like I said, I did not know the importance of volunteering when you're going into a medical field. I, d I had no idea what an internship was. I had heard of an internship. I didn't know the details. And I have friends who've um, gone to like Bunker Hill Community College who were like, no, I've been doing internships since my first year. And I was like, what? So I feel like I, I wish I had known a little bit more about it because there are tons of opportunities here in Lowell. Uh, Lower General Hospital, uh, and, any, and any, I'm saying in the science field because that's what I go into, but, um, and so things outside the classroom, I'm usually really involved and I feel like it's so important. Um, and so that's, those were my experiences. So we've already talked a little bit about differences between the faculty interaction. So I'd, I'd like to know, um, first of all, how you would describe, and you've talked about this a little bit, but I want to hear this in detail the difference between the workload at Middlesex and at your current university. So if you can talk about the lengths of papers, labs, research projects, you know, things like that, just so we can get a sense. And a lot of this is so that we can tell our students when they complain about our workload. <laughs> 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 a lot of the four years. <laughs> so if you, if you have any concrete examples, that would be great. Uh, let's see. So, so one project that I'd like to not the time to not like doing, but help kind of help me prepare most uh, was the uh, honors conference, the poster conference. Uh, so getting to be a part of that this past semester, I had to be a part of Clark University's poster conference, where you present some kind of research topic that you worked really hard on, so on and so forth, the kind of same forum. And having had experience under my belt doing that at community college, like my friends were surprised that I got to do that, and they had not yet had to do that. Uh, so that was definitely one thing that really helped me out. Uh, another, another kind of aspect of the classes that I would say is different would be the lines of papers. And so I, I hate to say, but a 20-page paper, you know, the classes at Clark is kind of normal and or short. And so I've had to do, you know, 35 pages. And you know, looking forward, if you were to tell me, hey, you're going to have to do 35 pages in you know next semester. I would have perhaps laughed or cried. <laughs> uh, so, so I hate to say with the lines of papers, but not only that, but the rigor of papers. And so the professors, I say, will keep it as open. And so the professors that I've had here have left it open for your gen general interest, you know, whatever, as it relates to the class. But I would say that over there, it is kind of the same openness, but they do expect a certain degree, uh, a, a certain standard to the research as well. And so that's nothing, I'm not saying that Middlesex didn't, I'm saying that I just specifically noticed that at Clark because of the length. I really had to keep it kind of condensed with, you know, relevant material and concise ways of presenting that material. So the papers, projects, and generally the tests are just about the same, I hate to say. <laughs> uh, so perhaps that's, a, that's, you know, a note to Middlesex in saying that they structure their tests well. Uh, so, to speak more on that, it's the, my experiences here at Middlesex have been, I would say, about, to give a random number, 40%, you know, having to memorize and just learn facts and then input those onto a page, and the rest really conceptual-based, and I've valued those more, and so at Clark I get a lot more conceptual-based uh, tests and quizzes and kind of questionnaires uh, as, uh, as I've had here, so that's, that's also been a 
No. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, the difference in our I would say the biggest thing is how many hours of sleep you average for the week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would agree. Yeah, I had one project where I get to school. I had to get to school for seven in the morning on a Wednesday morning, and I didn't <coughs> leave there, on the music building, until four thirty the next morning, because that was a group project nightmare. So it, there's a lot more group projects and. Um, the, the workload is, my papers aren't really long. I've had a, f a few long papers that are like, you know, 30 to 40 pages or whatever, but it's not just all, th all information from inter internal information. It's more of researching and um, more providing examples and quotations and stuff like that. But for the workload, it's, for, for now for me, it's more teaching and experience and teaching so that's the workload that I have to deal with right now. But yeah, I, how many hours of sleep you average for the week is probably <laughs> the biggest difference. <laughs> um, the workload, huh? <laughs> I was not expecting it, to say the least. I was not expecting the difference, you know? Because, you know, the Lowell Connection Program, I would think, you know, UMass would have a lot of similar things in coursework and henceforth, especially if I'm doing the same major. I was wrong <laughs> to say. But um, I think the, co the, the coursework in one of my classes, my research one class specifically, I spent over 90 hours a week for that one class. And the hardest part of it was that the main focal point of the class was not inside the class, but rather it was a research proposal and a group project with two or three other people. And when I say, you know, that research proposal meant a lot, it was 30% of my grade. So it was crucial from start to finish, you know, to do it all right and stuff. And the difference between, you know, the, the, the papers and proposals and the research I've done in Middlesex is that, you know, you can know a base knowledge, you know, conceptualize a lot of things about it, give your ideas, you know, you'll still do decently great on it. But at... UMass, it's so specific. I mean, that research proposal, I had to intertwine uh, intimacy into my proposal. I was forced to do it. It wasn't a choice of options. So, you know, I had to be very careful in what words and what uh, research I used and stuff. And even at the end, I only got a B minus on the paper, which I'm grateful for. I can say <laughs> grateful for. But it's definitely harder and it puts a lot more time on it. But if you keep in contact with your professors, you know, let them know what can this change, what can that change, it can help a lot. And even then I did that sometimes at Middlesex, not as much, because I felt like a lot of the papers or exams, you know, I could do it by myself, but at UMass I need a lot more confirmation on what I need to do specifically or what they're looking for, specifically if they want certain topics on their papers or research pr proposals. And I'm only in research one. I still got to take statistics, and I still got to do <laughs> research three when I have to create an experiment and the whole work. So that's basically like a thesis. I don't want to get <laughs> into that yet, but I got to do it. So I definitely say it would be harder. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I'm kind of trying to piggyback, I guess, on everybody else. I, you know, like I said before, um, you could spend every hour or every day studying. Um, and it wouldn't be enough. And so I think <laughs> prioritizing your time, and I had a uh, like a great welcome committee over at Tufts, and uh, they really prepared me. I was a full-time student and going to school full, or sorry, working full-time um, when I was in Middlesex. And um, I liked the openness of the teachers. I knew exactly when things would be due, and so I could get things done early. You know, I wouldn't have to study for a class until I got a study guide or until I was reminded, hey, it's two weeks or however many weeks ahead. And uh, at Tufts, you just have to study every week, every day, you know. Um, and so I, I'd say that's it, you know. Um, the challenge is it's just, it's just that much more. You know, you need to understand that you're not, um, the deadline is the end of the semester and you just have to keep plugging until you get there, basically. It's and, and what about the reading load? Is that pretty heavy? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I'd spend, um, 
I'd say, uh, you know, on average, probably 20 or 30 pages a night, did, depending on the class, but per class, I'm saying, per class. So, um, it, you know, it, it depends on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, it might be more. Um, I, had a German I had a German film class, um, you know, a couple of nights we'd have a, a film to watch, and, you know, two hour film to watch and 40 or 50 pages of reading uh, essays about said film, right? So. Um, it's yeah, it's a lot of reading, a lot of reading comprehension, stuff like that. Um, so I guess prioritizing your time um, is is one of the biggest things there. So it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the curve saves a lot of people. <laughs> so at BU, to give you an example, of I recently just took a biochemistry course, and I would spend four hours in lab every week, uh, six hours in class, and. Um, the exam was a four-hour exam, so three exams. Well, we had four exams per semester, and that was my one of the science classes I was taking, organic chemistry, physics. And so my typical schedule is I wake up in the morning, I read before I go to class, I go to class, I come back, I read the lecture notes after that, and I do that until midnight, 1 o'clock, every single day. Um, and then, and you, you're doing that, you're preparing before for, to go to the class because if you show up to lecture and you're not following the professor, you're completely lost and that's an extra two hours you have to figure out what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so, and I didn't figure out to do that until after my first semester. And so the first, my first semester there, I was, I was everywhere, it was confusing. I didn't understand that you needed to go to lecture already understanding the material before you got there. Um, and so, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot, it's definitely a lot. You have to spend at least, I'd say, 10 hours on each, maybe each lecture, depending on how often you have the class. So if it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'd say about four hours is enough per lecture. But if you have the class once a week, you're doing 15, 20 hours for that, for that, for that lecture. And a lot of classes there are three and a half hours long. And so they give you, you know, your professors will give you 15 minute breaks, but that's about it. And I think the most I've ever taken class here at MCC was an hour and a half, maybe. And so when you show up and you're taking three and a half hour classes, you're just like, what, you know? Um, I haven't had many writing courses, but I did have one, because I did a lot of my requirements here. Um, 20 page papers are, they sound about right. For me, it was 20 page lab reports. <laughs> um, and so, yeah. Uh, physics, I took a physics course, and physics is hard. It's a hard class. Math, math is usually really hard, and I spent, um, a good amount, many, many hours studying for that. So it's it's a huge jump, definitely. You can tell your students that MCC is a blessing. And <laughs> I'm so, I used to complain here, I definitely don't anymore. <laughs>